In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve a couple of optimization problems. So optimization problems are those problems in which we find the maximum or the minimum value, um, and then we're going to use these extreme values to solve some practical applications. So for example, uh, we might want to minimize cost or maximize profit, or we want to maximize area or volume and minimize distances and times and costs. So to solve um, an optimization problem, I recommend that if you can, uh, draw a diagram and then label the quantities that are relevant to the diagram. Um, important to write a let statement to show what um, the variables are um, in your diagram. And then find a formula for the quantity that you want to be maximizing or minimizing. Now, as a rule of thumb, if the formula depends on more than one variable, let's say it depends on n variables, then you're actually going to have n minus 1 equations linking these variables. So for example, let's say you have three variables, then you're going to find two equations uh, that link these variables. Now, use the conditions that you are stated in the problem so that you can eliminate variables um, so that the formula will be expressed as a function of only one variable. So it's convenient to only have one variable. Um, you also want to find the interval of the possible values for this variable uh, from the physical restrictions of the problem so that you don't over uh, so that you don't choose a larger number or too small of a number and then find the maximum and minimum considering any critical points and endpoints now I know I've just read this steps through so let's use these steps um, to do um, an example so in the first one here we have a rectangular corral um, it's going to be built adjacent to the wall of a barn. A hundred feet of chain fence is available to enclose it. We want to find the width and length to give the largest area. All right, so let's say that this is our barn. And we want to build a rectangular corral, which is a pen, I guess, to hold animals. Okay, so here's a rectangular corral. And I'm going to say that these sides here are X and this is L. So I'm going to let X equal the width and then L is my length. Now there is a little bit of a restriction here and we know that we have a hundred feet of chain fence so we want to find the width and length. So just based on looking at the picture if I had no length then my x value would be 50 to represent both sides. But if I had the maximum length of 100, then x would have to be 0. All right, so next we want to uh, relate x and l. And we want to maximize so that we have the largest area. So we have a is equal to x times l. <coughs> now, remember that I said that we want to um, sorry, we want to find a formula so that we only have one variable. So what we're going to do is I'm going to write an expression for L. So knowing that we have 100 feet of chain fence, so this would go all around here, I know that the length is going to be 100, and then if I take away what I use for the x's, I will have whatever I have left for the length of the chain fence. So I have 100 to start with, I take away the two x's, and then whatever is left over will be left for the length. So I have an expression for L, which I'm going to substitute into my expression here. So I have a 100 minus 2x. So I have 100x minus 2x squared. Now I'm going to find the derivative. So it's dA dx, because we're trying to find the area, the derivative of the area with respect to x. And that equals 100 minus 4x. Remember, we want to maximize, so we're going to figure out where that top part or the peak is. So we set dA dx equal to 0, equal to 100 minus 4x. So 4x equals 100, and then x equals 25. So we found the restrictions. We found a critical number. So what we're now going to do is we're going to test to see which one gives me the best value. So of a of 0, I'm going to find the area if it's 25. And then I'm going to find the area when it's 50. 
All right, so kind of obvious maybe. So when the x value is zero, when we plug it into, so I'm gonna plug it into here since I only have one variable, I'm gonna get zero. When I plug in 50, 100 minus two times 50 is also zero. So I also get zero. So when I plug in 25, I'm gonna get 25 times 100 minus two times 25. And this gives me 1250. So I can see that the width is going to be 25 feet. And so if the width is 25 feet and I plug it into this equation over here, I can find my length. So the width is 25 feet and the length is 100 minus two times 25. So it's gonna be 50 feet. And just so that we can figure out what this is for our interest, maximum area is, and then we're gonna take the 25 and the 50 and we multiply those together and we get 1250 feet squared. All right, let's try another one that's a little bit different. So we have this one, it's a common lighthouse problem. So we have a lighthouse L and it's located on a small island and it's five kilometers north of a point A. So let's label this to be five kilometers. Um, and it's located in a point A, which is on a straight east and west shoreline. So the shoreline is this point here from A to B. A cable is to be laid from L to a point B on the shoreline. And this point B is 10 kilometers east of A. So this is 10 kilometers. Now the cable will be laid through the water in a straight line from L to a point P on the shoreline, which is between A and B. And then from there, it's gonna to go to um, point B. Now, the part of the cable that's lying in the water is gonna cost $5,000 per kilometer. Since it's in the water, it probably costs more, right? And then the part along the shoreline costs $3,000 per kilometer. So the question is, where should we place the point P so that we minimize the total cost of the cable? So this all here, this stuff here is our water. All right, so um, let's do some labeling. So let's say that we have this point X, okay? And then this distance from P to B will be 10 minus X. So we're gonna say let X equal the distance from A to P, okay? Now, the other thing is we wanna put a restriction for X. So X, it could be zero. So what I can happen is that I can lay the cable straight from L to B and not even go on the shoreline. However, I can also lay the cable straight from L to A and then lay it totally along the shoreline, the whole 10 kilometers. All right, so let's set up our cost. So the total cost, which I'm gonna call C is equal to, oh, and I need to put, maybe what we'll do is we'll put an expression here to help us. So this is gonna be x squared plus five squared. And then we need to take the square root of that. Okay, so the cost in the water is gonna be $5,000 times our length, which is the square root of x squared plus 25. And then the part in the, land or on the shore is gonna be $3,000 times 10 minus X. All right, so we're gonna calculate our derivative, so dc dx. So this is gonna be 5,000. And the derivative of this root is gonna be one over two. So I'm gonna put this on the bottom. And this will be X squared plus 25 to the power of negative a half. So I'm gonna move this to the denominator right away. Do our chain rule, we still need to multiply the derivative of the inside of the radical, which is 2x. Plus, I have my 3,000, which is in the front, 
and then it will take the derivative of, so the 3,000 is considered our um, coefficient, so that we take the derivative of the 10 minus x, which will be negative 1. All right, so let's already set this equal to 0 to make this a little bit easier. Do some reducing. So we've got 5,000x divided by x squared plus 25 minus 3,000. So I'm going to move this to the other side. So it would be 3,000. And I'm also going to multiply everything by root x squared plus 25. All right, so I can reduce everything here. So we're going to divide both sides by 1,000. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, square both sides so that I get rid of my radical. So I end up with 9, and then x squared plus 25. And then on the left, right side, I get 25x squared. So let's distribute. So I have 9x squared plus 225 equals 25 x squared, 225 equals 16 x squared, x squared equals 225 divided by 16, so x equals plus or minus 15 over 4. Well, that works out nice, that we have a nice fraction we can square root. Okay, so just to kind of squeeze this in on the side here, uh, we're now finding our cost. So the cost, if x was 0, we want to find the cost. If it's The x value is 15 over 4, which means it's going to be oh, about 3.75 kilometers from A. And then we also want to find the cost of 10. So when we find the cost, we're going to plug it back into our original equation up here. Okay, And actually, when we plug in 0, we find that this is going to be 55 thousand dollars. We plug in 15 over 4, it's going to be fifty thousand dollars. And then when we plug in 10, we get fifty-five thousand nine hundred and one dollar and seventy cents. <coughs> so remember this time we are trying to minimize our cost. And we can see that this point here would be the least amount. So we're gonna say, and I'll place this over here. P should be, actually, probably should put it here if we figured it out over here. So P should be 3.7 kilometers east of A. And if you want to know what the minimum cost is, we could also say that the minimum cost is $15,000. But it never asked for that. Um, so this is more for interest. So $50,000.